Alright guys, welcome to the video. All glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven and to my Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Today I'm going to be talking about seven Bible verses that can change your life. This is the second time I've done this series. I did one before called Five Bible Verses That'll Change Your Life. It'll probably be on the screen somewhere if you want to check that out. And a lot of people liked it, so I figured I'd do it again. So this one I'm going to do... But before I jump right into it, guys, hit the like button and comment down below and subscribe if you have not already subscribed. And if you have subscribed, hit the bell notification icon and select all so you get all notifications when I upload new content. So the first Bible verse that I have that will change your life, this is Jeremiah chapter 42, verses 4 through 7. It says, Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard indeed. I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words, and it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from you. So they said to Jeremiah, let the Lord be true and a faithful witness between us. If we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you. Verse six, whether it is pleasing or displeasing, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send you that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of our God in verse 7 this is the key verse that I want to put emphasis on here verse 7 says Jeremiah 42 verse 7 says and it happened after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah this is something that I've talked about before but I want to put it on this video because it is important the importance is God's timing is not always man's timing. Right now, we live in the microwave age where the moment you ask for something, you can have it. If you get hungry, you can eat food today. If you get thirsty, you can have water delivered to your door. If you want to work and earn money, you can do it from the comfort of your own home. We're in a microwave age where everything is literally put at your fingertips. At the press of a button, you can have anything that you want. But we have to realize that in, in the midst of this, God is God Almighty. He's not, he's not of this world. He doesn't change because the world changes. God is who he is. He is sovereign. So sometimes in the microwave age, we can probably feel like that maybe God's not hearing us or maybe God is not going to answer us. But perhaps we're not patient enough to wait on the timing of God. This says that Jeremiah prayed to God and after 10 days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. How many times have you prayed waiting 10 days for an answer or even more? Or did you pray and if you didn't get an answer that day or the next day or within those three days, you decided that you gave up, right? It took Jeremiah 10 days, who was a prophet of God, who was chosen by God, who had a, a connection to God that he can talk to God and hear directly from God to give a word to the people. And even Jeremiah, it took him 10 days to hear a response. Now, God can answer you immediately if he so chooses to. God can answer you in two days if he so chooses to. God cannot answer you at all if he so chooses to. He can answer you in 10 days. He can answer you in 10 months. But the point is, are you longing, hoping, and waiting on the word of the Lord, or do you just pray, and if you don't hear something immediately, you decide that maybe God doesn't care, maybe God is not listening to me, maybe God is not going to answer me. And so I bring this verse to, to change your prayer life so that you can realize that you can pray and it could take 10, it could take five, it could take 10 minutes, it could take one minute, it could take 30 seconds, it could take a year, whatever the will of God is. But do not lose heart because you didn't get an answer immediately. Some answers come instant, some don't. This answer came to Jeremiah after 10 days. So my message to you is, are you willing to wait at least 10 days to get a response and, and perhaps longer? But are you willing to wait and hold out longing for the word of the Lord until it comes? Realizing that just because everything else may come to you instantly in this world that we have designed today doesn't necessarily mean that God is going to do things instantly on your timing or according to the way that the world is currently set up. This causes a disconnect, I believe, between this to spiritual realities, right? You know, the Bible says when, when, when Daniel, he fasted for 21 days before the answer came to him because there was, there was a war going on that was withholding the answer to his prayer from coming. So he waited 21 days for a word to come. And, and, and 24 days, really, but he fasted 21 days. So are you willing to wait 24 days to, for the answer to the worry that you're seeking from God? Or do you lose heart and stop continuing because it's not there instantly? So this Bible verse changes your life because it teaches you to be patient and wait on God. God is, may or may not answer you instantly, may not answer you at all, or he may. 
in 10 or more days. So that's one. The second Bible verse that will change your life is 2 Chronicles 16, 12 through 13. It says, And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. Verse 13, So Asa, he died in the 41st year of his reign. So the Bible says that King Asa went and sought after the doctors. He went to the physicians when he became sick. He did not seek the Lord God for his healing, but rather he went to man. He went to humans and doctors. Now, maybe perhaps God would have directed him to go to a a physician or a particular physician. Perhaps God would have directed him to do something else. But the point is, he didn't go to God first, but rather he went to man. He went to doctors. Rather, he went on Google and Googled uh, what's the solution to this issue i have a little neck pain what's the reason for this issue instead of going to god and say god i feel this pain in my neck what can i do to fix it sometimes we now we we run to google first because google got google has all the answers and we can get it instantly god's answer may back to the last point god's answer may not be as fast as we'd hoped but google's answer is immediately but google's answer will never be as good as the answer of god one thing you'll see in the bible is that there's, there's times where There's something going on and people seek God for why it's happening. And there's a spiritual reason for why it's occurring. There's a a story, when you read the story of David, which is one of the the best stories in the Bible, reading the story of David, I believe from 1 Samuel 15 to the end of 2 Samuel, it's like reading a novel. It's 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 like a beautiful novel, but it's real. Um, And there's a story where there's a famine in the land. And um, David seeks the Lord God as the why there's famine in the land. And there's a spiritual reason for why there's a famine in the land because there was some injustice done in the land and and this has caused a famine in the land. And the injustice had to be handled so that the famine would end. So sometimes even in, in, in sickness and infirmity, sometimes even in disease, there's a spiritual reason for why it's occurring. And if you seek the Lord your God for the answer, you can rectify the spiritual reason why and receive healing that way. Sometimes you could just receive immediate healing. It, it could happen a host of different ways. But sometimes there is indeed a spiritual cause for why you're going through what you're going through, why the pain is what the pain is. Sometimes you're enduring a trial, right, for the sake of your endurance, for the sake of your perseverance, for the sake that you'll bear more fruit. But sometimes there's also a spiritual reason for why you're going through a particular trial. And if you seek the Lord your God and say, God, what did I do? Or what has happened in my life? Or what has happened in my lineage that has led to this happening to me now that I can repent for that I can seek you about that I can ask you about so that I can rectify this issue so this verse will change your life because it'll it'll help you understand why it's important to run to God first and not the doctors because even if a doctor has a, 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 a what seems to be a solution to your problem what doctors do what a lot of people in the world do Right. The Bible says if God doesn't watch the city, those who watch the city watch it in vain. If God doesn't build the house, the builders build it in vain because they can make it. They can make a mistake. They can miss a spot. They can fall asleep. Uh, so the doctor as well, if, if, if God is not helping your situation and even the doctors work on you in vain, a lot of times what they do is they 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 attack the they attack the the plant of the problem or the fruit of the problem. And they never deal with the root. If you ever know anything about weeds. You can cut a weed, the weed will grow right back. If you want to get rid of weeds, you have to pull the weed up by its root and remove the weed, the, the root of the weed. Otherwise, it'll come right back. That's what people find when they're going to therapy. A lot of times what therapy is, is the therapist is just clipping the fruit of the problem. That's why you have to keep going back to the therapy every week because she only or he only makes you feel better for a week or two. Now you have to revisit and pay again because they're only tackling the fruit of the problem. So the fruit will grow back again. So you have to keep making appointments after appointments because the fruit will continue to grow back until the root of the problem is dealt dealt with. And more than a lot of times, the root of that problem is a spiritual problem that has to be dealt with. You can deal with the mind, you can deal with the body, you can deal with the thing, but you have to deal with the heart. You have to deal with the spiritual root of the issue. Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of your heart comes evil thoughts and blasphemies. We have to deal with the heart, the spiritual root of the problem, to eliminate the problem and not temporarily provide your relief for a problem that's going to come right back. All right, another Bible verse that'll change your life is Deuteronomy 29, 4 through 5. It says, Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and eyes in and eyes to see and ears to hear to this very day. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn out on your feet. I talked about this verse in a short before, but I want to talk about it here. And probably a video in, in, a, in a live stream video too. But God says that He told Israel they were in the wilderness. And they were 
uh, murmuring against God. They had built the golden calf. They were, they were unhappy and murmuring and complaining about their circumstances after God dramatically delivered them out of Egypt. He says, he, God says that I've led you in the wilderness for 40 years and, and, and your clothes have not worn out on you. Your sandals have not worn out on your feet. Have you ever looked at your, have, have you ever thought or considered that what if your favorite jacket the reason why you've had it for 10 years and it doesn't have any holes in it, it doesn't have any, any deep markings in it, is because God has preserved it for you. Now, we might think that that's beneath God, right? We might think that God in his holiness, that he's high, he's holy, he's so far removed from this world that he could not possibly be concerned with my clothes or my shoes. But what if I told you that God is? What if I told you that the Bible says that God has the hairs on your head numbered, that he knows how many hairs is on your head, that he cares about you that much to the finest of details, that it's not beyond, it's not, God is not too, he's high, holy, and mighty, but he, he's not too on a high horse that he won't care about your, your clothing and your shoes. And, and, he, and if anyone, God has the right to, he, he's on the highest of all highs already. And yet in his holiness, in his glory, in his highness, he still cares about the lowest parts of you. And so that this verse will change your life because you'll realize how much God truly loves you. Sometimes when we're murmuring against God or we're complaining or we feel like our life doesn't look the way that we wanted it to look or things ain't going the way that we wanted it to think, it, we would be astonished to realize just how much God has done in our life that we have no idea about. And God is so loving that he don't even, he didn't, he don't even need credit for it, right? He's going he's to he's get his glory, but he, he doesn't even need credit for it. God didn't tell them, don't you know, every day, yo, I'm, I'm keeping your clothes from falling apart. Yo, I'm keeping your shoes from falling apart. You should be grateful. They didn't know till after 40 years that this had happened. That's how glorious and that's how loving God is. That he didn't even make, and, and how much more did he do that he did not say? I would only imagine that he did far more than he said. And, 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 and you know, that's God for you. That's the holiness of the almighty, gracious and glorious, loving and holy God. He didn't need credit for it. He just did it because he loved them. He didn't do it so that they can say thank you because he didn't tell them about it. He just took care of them. So God could be taken care of and handling and loving the most smallest, minor detail of your life and you'd have no idea about it. But get to know this about God today, that he cares about the highest and the lowest points of you and that he loves you. So when you murmur and complain, just remember how much God has kept from you that you do not see before you think about the things that you want to see. Uh, James 5.16 says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Bring it into the light. Expose it. Darkness can't prevail in the light. So the point, well, the darkness can't prevail into the light. I wrote that. The verse ends at the prayer, but the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And I was writing that one of the things I tell people is that sin is a form of darkness. And this Bible in the verse of James says, confess your sins to one another. Sometimes you have a sin and you think you've confessed it before God in, in your own privacy. You've kind of shallowly confessed it. And sometimes that's enough. But there are situations where you have to conf you confess your sins to another. And then confessing your sins to another, a brother in Christ, somebody that you trust, not just anybody. Uh, but when you confess your sins to another, you bring that sin out into the light. And it, and, and it adds a level of responsibility to you. Because now you have to deal and face what you did and, and, and the temporary shame of it because God will take the shame away. And, 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 and you face and deal with what you did, you bring it into the light because light will eliminate darkness. Darkness cannot exist in light. The moment light is introduced, all darkness disappears. So sometimes when we're hiding things in our hearts, we're hiding sins and we haven't confessed them or brought them to the light, we're hiding darkness within ourselves. And if we would bring that darkness into the light by telling somebody and, and bringing it into the open, right it would eliminate the darkness so that, that it could not live in us anymore right it, so, so sometimes there are some burdens i believe that are released at times and I, god can do anything at any time i'm just speak every situation is not identical so there are some burdens where um when you can when you bring it to, to another it, it eliminates all the darkness from the issue that the issue cannot exist anymore there's been times I, I had an experience recently with somebody they were hiding a bunch of sins and um, they hadn't told anybody. They had prayed to God before. They had, they had thought they confessed it. But there's a difference between remorse and repentance again. Repentance is I'm willing to deal with the, the shame and the consequence of what I've done. So that consequence could be, doesn't have to be, but that consequence could be in certain situations telling one other person and having to look them in the face and they know that I did what I did because I don't want to do this anymore. So I'm going to bring it into the light so I'm accountable to another that I don't do this again. And so this person, they had, they had confided in me and told me all their, so they said all their sins. And the, the moment they told me, they began to vomit. 
because the, they began to get delivered of demonic spirits because the spirits could no longer live in them because light had been introduced to the things that they refused to confess. And so once the light intro was introduced, the darkness surrounding the problem, the darkness surrounding the issue was eliminated from them. The darkness surrounding the issue was removed. The darkness surrounding the issue was taken away. And so sometimes there's situations where you have to bring that darkness into the light. And once it's brought into the light, that darkness can't live in you and function and operate anymore. So never underestimate the power, as it says in James 5, 16, confess your trespasses to one another. People might think this only means if you sin against your brother. No, most of the time when you sin against your brother, he knows. Right. You still confess to him and apologize. But most of the time they know There's times where they don't know. But a lot of times they know. But you could even confess the, the things that you've done to a, to a brother in Christ that you trust, that, that they might pray with you, repent with you, and the light may be introduced to the darkness and you might go free. All right. Another verse that may change your life. Number five is Habakkuk. Habakkuk verse chapter two, verse three, it says, for the vision is yet for, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. If you've ever feel like God has given you a vision and you feel like, man, I don't know if it's going to happen. Things ain't kind of looking right. Things ain't looking like they should. It's, I, I don't believe it's going to happen. Habakkuk says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. The Bible says it will surely come. That if God has given you a vision, that vision will come to pass. Sometimes you may feel like you, you've ruined God's plan for you. You can't ruin nothing God has set. Now you can walk away from it if you choose to. But you can also hold on to faith and believe this vision is going to come to pass. Though it tarries, wait for it, it will surely come. So this is just a verse for you to keep hope. That if you feel like you've had a vision that God has given you, and maybe you've fallen away from it a little bit. Maybe you've second-guessed it. Maybe you've fallen away from it a little bit. I, I challenge you today to come back to it. Come back to it and wait for it because it will surely come. That's what Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 says. Wait for it, it will surely come, right? Romans 3 Romans 8, 33 through 34 says, this is another verse that'll change your life. It says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also written, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So the main verse there is the most, the, the, the one that sticks out for this, this video is, it is God who justifies. Who is he who, who condemns? So sometimes we have brought our sins into the light. Sometimes we've exposed them. And sometimes we're still dealing with the darkness. Sometimes we're still dealing with the attack of the enemy whispering to us, trying to make us feel guilty, trying to make us feel condemned, trying to make us doubt that the blood of Jesus Christ has truly washed and cleansed our sin. Because the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. But the belief must first be in your heart. So if you're still struggling with guilt, if you're, the, 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 one of the points of guilt and shame is to cause you to feel like Jesus didn't indeed take away your sin. And if they can get you to, to doubt that Jesus has took your sin, then they're getting you to doubt the fact that you, you could actually be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Right. So the Bible says God has justified you. Who can condemn who God has justified? And I love Derek Prince he makes a quote. He says, um, he says, justified means just as if I never sinned. So if you've turned away from your sin, if you've repented and cried out to God in the name of Jesus Christ and repented of your sin, do not accept condemnation in your heart or in your mind from the enemy any further. You repeat this verse. It is God who justifies who is this who condemns me? The meaning is Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might have life through him. So if Jesus was righteous, he was perfect, found without sin. He could have condemned, he could have condemned us all, right? If he chose to, but that's not what he came for. So if Jesus didn't condemn us, Jesus and the father are one. The meaning is God was not condemning us, but God sent Jesus to save us from our sin. And if we don't believe on him, we condemn ourselves because we die and we're still in our sin. But if you have believed on in Jesus Christ, you are redeemed of your sin and God has justified you through his son, Jesus Christ. So hold your faith in Jesus and realize that God has justified you through Jesus Christ. Say, God has justified me. I am justified. I am I, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am out of the hand of the devil and I'm in, I'm in the body of Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Lastly, as I wrap up, guys, one more 
Bible verse that I just found interesting. I'm just throwing this one in there as number seven. It reminded me of when the, the world changed and, and everybody was, was forced to stay at home and people couldn't go outside and, unless they had certain things and people were given in to take you know, certain poisons and things like that because they wanted to the luxuries of the world. So the world was offering, you know, a potion. They were offering a serum and an injection. And some people were taking it because they wanted their job or they wanted to be able to go to restaurants and travel. And there's a verse in Isaiah. I'm not saying it's talking about the pandemic, but it made me think about it. It said, Isaiah 26, 10 says, come my people, enter in your rooms and close your doors behind you. Hide for a little while until indignation runs its course. And it just reminded me of what that time was like for me personally, who, 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 who decided to, by the grace of God, and what, was, what I believe was revealed and shown to me not to participate in that stuff. But he said, come my people, enter in your rooms and close the door behind you. Hide for a little while until indignation ran its course. And as you know, that situation ran its course, but it may happen again. So you want to keep this verse in mind and be careful. That's the video today, guys. All glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hit the like button, comment down below, and share this video with somebody that it might help. 